My name is David Lister and I'm a rabbi of Edgeway United Synagogue. A rabbi is a religious leader for Jewish people. My day starts at about six o'clock in the morning. I come to the synagogue for about quarter to seven where we have a prayer service. It's entirely in Hebrew and sometimes we will also be reading from the Torah scroll as part of that service. I'm always there in the services and I pray along with everybody else. I don't like to lead the services because I find it easier to concentrate if I'm just doing my own thing rather than leading the whole congregation. After the service, it's an unofficial time for people to come and speak to me if they've got a question or something they want to tell me and uh, I can be around at the end for that as well. We don't have breakfast until after the service is finished because we want the service to be the first major thing of our day. The official English word for uh, this place is a synagogue. Uh, in Hebrew it's also called Beit Knesset, which means a place of gathering. The synagogue is also called a shul, which is based on the German word Schule, meaning a school. This is because there's a close connection between Jewish prayer and Jewish learning. We regard Jewish learning as a big religious duty and therefore for us it's a natural thing to have learning in the same place as where we pray. We don't have any pictures of God in our synagogue or anywhere because we say that God can't be drawn and whatever you were to do to draw him would limit him to a physical form. Our holy book is called the Torah and it's written in classical Hebrew. On the Saturday mornings, the Sabbath mornings, we read a particular portion known as the portion of that week. And we have 54 portions altogether and we read a different portion or portions each week. Uh, this cap is called a kippah, which means a hat, and it reminds us that God's in charge of us and we're not in charge of ourselves. It's only worn by Jewish men, not by Jewish women. We don't wear it literally all the time, so if I'm having a shower, I'll take it off. If I'm going to sleep, I'll take it off. If it's going to get blown off in the wind, I'll not bother putting it on in the first place. Married Jewish men will also wear a tallit or prayer shawl, which is a big sort of sheet with four corners and a special fringe called a tzitzit on each of the corners. The tzitzit starts off with lots of knots and curls, but then it becomes very loose and free. And this is a symbol for a Jewish journey. When we start off being good, it can be difficult and it can feel very restricted, like the knots and the curls are all tied up and tight. But if we can break through that and persist to the end of that time, then we will come to a time of freedom, which is much greater and much better. To fill in are leather boxes with long straps attached. We put one box on our upper arm and the other box on our head. And we wear these when we pray on weekday mornings. The boxes contain these scrolls that have messages for us about how we should conduct our lives and we think about those messages when we put them on our arms and that reminds us to act with our hands in a particular way and also the box on our head reminds us to think in a particular way. I do a lot of work at my kitchen table with my laptop, do a lot of communication that way, tapping away. But I also meet people here in the synagogue or I meet people in their homes. I meet people at all sorts of places like hospitals, cemeteries, anywhere where somebody might need me. So there's lots of things that I do and I'm all over the place. And it's one of the things that makes my job nice that there's no two days the same. I'm the principal of a school uh, here in Edgware, so I'll pop in there at least once a week and talk to the kids about a particular aspect of Judaism. A mezuzah literally means doorpost, although it's taken to refer to a little square of parchment with writing on it. And it reminds us that when we walk into a particular room in our home, we're supposed to behave in accordance with the rules of the Torah. 
The word kosher means appropriate, fitting, and it means that we're allowed to eat it and it's suitable for us to eat. We're only allowed to eat meat from certain animals, animals that chew the cud, which means they have several stomachs, and also they have split hooves. So, for example, we're allowed to eat meat from sheep and cows, but we're not allowed to eat meat from pigs or horses or rabbits. We're only allowed to eat the meat of certain birds. We may eat meat from chicken or ducks, but we're not allowed to eat the meat of an eagle or a vulture. If a fish has fins and scales, we're allowed to eat it. So we may not eat shrimps or shellfish, but we're allowed to eat salmon and trout. So we're only allowed to eat meat from animals and birds that have been slaughtered in a particular way, and then they have to be salted so that the blood is taken out because all blood is non-kosher for Jewish people. In addition to all of that, we're not allowed to eat meat that has been cooked together with milk. So in a Jewish person's kitchen, you'll find two sets of everything, two sets of knives and forks and plates and cups and spoons, and you may even have different cookers for meaty and milky. I speak English at home with my wife and children, although we could speak in Hebrew if we chose to, but English comes more naturally to us as it is our mother tongue, and we can express ourselves more warmly in our mother tongue, so I like to speak that way. Yeah, that's right. It was mincemeat and lasagna. Lasagna sheets. I go to bed at different times depending on how much there is to do in the day. It's normally about 11 o'clock or midnight. I'll be particularly interested in staying up late if I've not seen my wife all day. My main role as a rabbi is like a bridge. If people want to have access to Judaism, if they want to learn or get involved, I'll be there for them. I personally find Judaism an extremely inspiring thing. It's something which informs and encourages and helps us to believe in ourselves, reminds us that God loves us and cares for us. And it's also very rich and very deep, and it's full of surprises about how to see ourselves in the world and what we do. And if I can share that with somebody else and see that same excitement and wonder in somebody else, that's the most satisfying and enjoyable part of being a rabbi.